I'm Rich from Goblin Gaming. Um, this is the second try. We just tried to do this live stream a minute ago. Sitting here with Sean from Orc Painter or Painting Nerd. He doesn't mind no, which way you do it. Um, so Sean has kindly come in today. He's going to join us for a little bit of a chat. Um, we're going to be having a look at some painting different to what you might have normally seen him do. Um, with his, uh, he's very well known for his airbrushing and his weathering effects on tanks. And you may have seen the other week. We'll have a look at slightly later. His um, Frankly, disgusting defacing of a wonderful <laughs> pop, pop vinyl uh, that he's, he has made the coolest looking. It's no longer a blood angel, but uh, we'll be having a look at that later as well. Um, anyway, Sean, first of all, thank you for coming in. No, that's fine. I'm glad to be here. Cool, cool to have you up here. You may have seen us do stuff with Sean in the past. Um, he's been one of our affiliates for a very long time, going on five years now. Yeah. Um, so, well, let's start. let's start with your painting. Let's ask you some questions. How... Did you actually get into painting miniatures? Did you have an artistic flair and wanted to give a crack at miniatures? Or did yeah. you pick up a miniature, realise you were brilliant? Or were you like me, you picked up a miniature, realised you were terrible? I, um, and then hopefully maybe five years down the line yeah. I will be doing what you do. Well, Tell yeah, us. I basically started from being uh, interested in uh, drawing pictures and that sort of thing. So yeah. from comic books, I used to collect comic books. So I got into superheroes, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And one day I was uh, up uh, at Town High Street and I just stumbled across the Games Workshop with my dad. I think I was about 10 or 11 at the time, very young. And uh, I, just, I was just wowed by the beautiful painting miniatures in the window, in the display cabinets. and. Um, my dad could see straight away I was taken aback by what I was seeing in the window there of the painted miniatures and uh, I think that started my love for painting and yeah. collecting miniatures uh, but that was when I was younger and, and those miniatures looked quite shocking I can, yeah, I can, I can this, um, assure you white metal and that was when I first got my first miniatures I had plastic ones yeah. but then it was white metal was yeah. all the popular things I remember leafing through the old magazines and you could like back order from the catalogs yeah, yeah. stuff like that and like, what, do you remember what your first miniature was? It was probably a space marine, to be honest, or a space orc. I can remember it was probably second edition, maybe for 40k, maybe. I could be wrong here, but uh, I remember the orcs had such static poses back they then. They did, yeah, they had like an axe. Yeah, and they like did, a gun. and then a gun, and like it was that, very static, they? very they stiff. Sort of like this. Yeah. And then there were the Gretchens just holding. Yeah, that's uh, it. I remember yeah. them. That was probably oh, kick the table. That was probably my first army as well. Um, so bear with me. I'm just going to make sure we're actually appearing for everybody on Facebook. Yeah. This is this is the the wonders of going out live. Is the constant tech difficulties we've had this morning. It looks like we're good. I think I see us there. Yeah, we're live. Wicked. Um, so guys, um, before I go back to what Sean was just saying, if you uh, have questions for Sean, you know, pop them in the chat box. I want to have some interaction here. Um, you know, if you're interested in the painting, if you're interested in learning a little bit about, because we're going to have Sean painting a model for us live. A really nice one. Um, yeah, this is a really nice model. Um, we're focusing on the cloak, the robes, and the clothing, which is stuff that I know some people find a bit more difficult. Um, so before we crack on, so share, you know, share this stream with your friends, tag them in it so they can see what we're doing. That would be fantastic. Give us some love hearts when you like what we're doing. Yes. Give us some thumbs up. Give us some sad faces if you don't like what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Not so, too many sad faces. <laughs> yeah, because whenever you click the sad face, it comes up on the screen, and it might be distracting if Sean is just rained on by sad faces. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I digress. Yeah, you're. First model, the the very static orcs, Gretchens, that's what I remember having. Yeah. I remember painting really badly, slopping it on because yeah. I was quite young. Painting has come a long way. Like in front of us now, you've you've set up what you're gonna use today. Yeah. We have layer paints, base paints, base paints, glazes, there's technical paints. That, that we didn't have that. No, no, it was I mean I think when I was painting from the start of the hobby, inks had only just come out, and then that was a new technique using inks yep. before washes came out, and I think that left all the miniatures with a glossy uh, finish. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's come a long way now, and especially a lot of you was lucky enough to get to try their new paints. Yeah, yeah, they were very. So they're very interesting. They're very. Uh, I've seen good stuff. I've seen people yeah. saying very negative stuff about these new contrast paints. Um, I like them personally. I've seen them used on a range of models. What they seem to be fantastic for is painting scales yeah. and fur 
and the fleshy models oh, okay. quickly. They seem to Brilliant. work really nicely for that. Someone had a Slanesh army, um, and it just looked fantastic. The, the sort of scales on the beasts that they ride um, look brilliant. And then a Beastman army was fantastic too. Yeah. Um, but then for people like yourself, I'm, I'm keen to see what you do when you get your hands on them. I, I think it, they're going to be fantastic for the beginner. Yep. But also, because they seem highly pigmented, yep. they can be great, great for like glazing and that sort of thing as well. Yeah, well, the, the the pictures we threw up the other day, you could see the model once it had dried. It, it yeah. did have a very nice shined glazed look on it, um, which was really interesting. We've got some people saying, hey, uh, hey Jason, hey Adam, uh, great to see you guys doing this. Yeah, brilliant. I can't wait to try the contrast. No, um, well, I got to play around with them. Yeah. Sean's obviously very keen. Yeah, definitely. Um, they, what did we do? We, we played around with a Plague Marine, but um, my friend Stephen from Vanguard was playing around with it, and he painted it uh, completely the wrong colour, but it still looked great. Um, <laughs> I saw some guys painting Plague Marines with basically the Blood Angel colour. Oh, right. It uh, looked really, really nice. And I can see how you can do this very quickly and then just touch them up. Yeah. Um, so for people who are kind of like me, not very good at painting. I enjoy painting, right? Yeah. But I'm not very good at it. So these paints will let me feel like I'm good at painting. Still get the enjoyment of painting. And that's what you want, really. Yeah. And also, I don't, I don't want to sort of throw like my family situation into it. But you know, I'm not single. I have three kids. Yeah. They're very demanding of my time. I would love to spend more time painting. But these are going to save me so much time, which I could be, you know, actually playing with the minis. Yeah. So for someone like myself who wants to get them on the table. Well, and who isn't it. very good at painting, it would take me a very long time to do a full Horde army. Yeah. So there's that to it too. So I'm very excited for them because of that, and I think my sort of demographic may be where they're more aimed. Yeah. Because um, I know a lot of the professional painters like yourself maybe um, enjoy the whole process and don't yeah. want to skip those steps and no. probably can get a better effect by doing the full thing, I would yeah. say. Well, yeah, and it, like I say, they will be brilliant for yeah. the beginner. But don't just think of the beginner because they're going to have properties that are going to lend themselves to people that have been painting for a long time yeah. as well. I think what it is, people are thinking that these paints are washes, but they're a bit different from washes. Yeah. They may be applied like a wash, yeah. but the pig pigmentation of that paint is completely different. If you just washed a miniature with bad or black, not bad or black, um, Nor Nile, for example. Yeah, yeah. If you wash the miniature with Nor Nile, it would lead, look all choppy and whatnot. But these paints, from the results I've seen, yeah. they look fantastic. Well, yeah, and, and they're good fun to play with. You really yeah. do slop them on. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no, it's one thick, heavy coat, coat. <laughs> that you yes. put these paints on with, um, which is cool. So, but like today, again, go, going back to paintbrushes, we're using paintbrushes. You're well known for your airbrushing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you're well known for airbrushing larger models. Yeah. So I've really kind of thrown you in it by giving you a small model and yeah. a paintbrush today yeah, <laughs> to work fine. with. So this is a little bit out of your comfort zone. Let's just show everybody. So if I just swap my, our camera angle here, you can have a little look at um, what Sean's going to be having to play with. There we go. Yeah. Uh, tell us uh, what you're looking at here. So what we've got in front of us is a Gene Steeler Court Mini with a very nice cloak. And uh, what we're going to do really is use the game's workshop painting method, which is to base the miniature, to layer it up, and then we might, uh, if we've got time, hopefully use a glaze on top of all the layer painting that we do to bring it all together. Um, so that should look really nice. That's cool, because I know a lot of people really struggle on cloth, on yes. banners especially. Yeah. These techniques can probably be applied to like the banner bearers. Yeah. Uh, I hate painting banners up. Um, and just the units with ropes, there's so many painting tutorials I tend to see, or you, you can find painting tutorials for everything, but people focus a lot on armour, the weathering effects, um, because there's not as many units I find in people's armies that have the cool flowing robes, unless you choose a particular armour. Oh, yeah, that's so true. It's going to be nice to have a look at that today as well. Um, so what's Jason say? Remember one of the first box sets where you would get a Space Marine and an Orc army? Static paint, yeah, that's exactly what. Yeah, we, yeah. My first box was my brother was who wanted to get into painting, um, uh, well, sorry, into into Warhammer, and my brother was the one who bought the box and he unloaded all those orcs and Gretchens on me, um, and then we found like a load of car boot or something to flesh the rest of that out. Um, that's how we first got into them. Uh, contrast paints all the way allow me to start an Imperial Fists finally. Oh yes, bay. yellow hard color. 
Beige yellow paint that isn't as even as thick ice cream or thin as water. So you'll you'll understand more what they mean there. I don't do a lot of painting with oh, yellow. Oh, what was this one? Sorry. I dream of a beige yellow paint that isn't either as thick as ice cream or thin as water. Yeah. Is that um, a problem that people have? Yellow is a very difficult paint um, because, like he says, uh, it doesn't coat generally that well. Mm. But Games Workshop's Avalon Sunset is a very nice paint. Yeah. And uh, as a base to actually then build up a lighter yellow on, it's a really nice colour to work with. But, yeah, I can see... Is uh, problems with yellow. Uh, you paint uh, yeah. yellow. I do yellow without an airbrush. No? no, no, not anymore. This is interesting. So we're going to have a little talk about airbrushes as well while you're yeah. doing this because I've never painted with an airbrush. That's something no. I'm going to look at in future. And I know what it's like for people to be a little bit apprehensive. It's, it's an outlay. It's a yeah, piece of it kit. Is. Um, and you know it's scary, you're spraying paint at your yeah. whole model, yeah. there's so much that can go wrong, especially when you've got big fat man hands for yourself, <laughs> and then just all over the place. Um, but yeah, that will, it'll be interesting to n hear what Sean has to say, the differences between how you would approach this model yeah. with an airbrush versus how we're going to have you doing with paintbrushes now. Yeah. Um, so what, what, what are we doing with this model? Let's, let's get a close in on the model and let's have a look at it. Yeah. So let's start off with the very basics. Now, you don't have to prime plastic miniature, but I would say it's really good that you do. This miniature in front of us, as you can see, has been primed. And what it does, it gives a nice, smooth, even uh, tooth to the miniature, if you like, where paint will just glide onto it. If you actually paint on unprimed miniatures, uh, the paint just doesn't go onto the miniature as nicely. And also, when you prime the miniature, it actually brings the details out, so okay. you can find it easier to actually paint as well. So that's the very start of painting your miniature is to prime it, really. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then, what we're going to be doing... So, yeah, we, we're not going with the typical colours that are expected for this miniature. No, so what are we not. doing in terms of colours? Uh, we're going for a, a red uh, cloak because... I think it's more of a danger colour, more of a sinister colour, and I think it'll look a little bit better than the purple that he's seen on the actual box art. Uh, but that's my uh, personal opinion uh, on the cloak. I think it'll look nice in a red cloak. So what we'll do, we'll start, if it's okay with you, to start painting. So always shake your paints first of all, make sure the paint's thoroughly mixed. And we're also going to be using a palette, as you can see in front of us. Now this is just a tile, so you don't need anything spectacular to use as a palette. You can use an old CD, Tupperware lid, that sort of thing. And as you can see, if I move... It's alright, I just knocked the camera. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, it only, it only went off for a second. We can thin it down like so. Yeah. And now we're just going to paint it. Now what I'll show you is if I just place some of the paint on the other side, undiluted, you can see that it coats well, but it's not it doesn't run as smoothly off the brush as you can see there. Okay. Now if I flip to the other side and we can see how smoothly that's running down the cloak. So what I'm gonna do now is um, just paint all of this cloak with a uh, base paint corn red. Now, I'm not worrying about the parchments because mm -hmm. they could be touched up with uh, say Zandri dust for example later on okay. uh, which we're not going to be doing today so I'm not worried about painting over the parchments at all. So you can quite happily put the bone colours and the, the parts Straight over the top. top the great thing with Games Workshop paints, I find, especially the base paints, is they cover really well. Yeah. Um, so painting over other areas or other details, see there, painted just a little bit too thin and you can probably yeah. see on camera if I can just tilt it round. Yeah, was, feel free to just stick it under the camera. Although the focus is kind of here, but <laughs> it yeah. shouldn't make too much difference. There we go. So if, if you wanted to basically do this a different colour, say you wanted to do it purple, say you wanted to do a yellow cloak, you yep. would basically just choose these types of paint. Yeah, you gradient go for the, steps. Yeah, so if you wanted to do yellow, for example, mm -hmm. you'd probably go with um, 
Avalon Sunset, I believe it's called, and yeah. then you as the base, and then you just work up with a lighter colour um, layer paints from Games Workshop. Yep. So we start off with the darkest, and we build the lighter layers on top of those. Exactly. Yeah. And then we move on to glazes and technical. So you've got two bases here. So what what Sean's painting with his his base choice is corn red. Then we have Mephisto in red, uh, and then we move on to layers, I, I assume it might be in this order, uh, of Fire Dragon Bright, Wild Rider Red, and we have a glaze, Blood Letter. Yeah, the glaze is really good. What we'll be using that for is once we've added all our layer paints, especially Fire Dragon Bright, which is bringing it to the orange spectrum, yeah. uh, so it's, it's going to make the, the cloak look a little bit chalky, the Glaze blood letter paint will, will take away that chalkiness uh, from the orange and bring the colours back together, but you'll still have a really nice highlight. Okay. So, someone who is airbrushing this, mm -hmm. you. So, common questions about airbrushing the actual accuracy of the airbrush. This is a small model. Um, it's a shame you can't put this on full screen. You should be able to put this on full screen, I believe, or turn your phone to landscape if you're watching on the phone. Um, and auto rotate should perhaps pop it up to full screen, I believe, uh, and then you'll get a much better view there. Uh, if, uh, sorry, um, yeah. So an airbrush, you're spraying paint from a distance, right? right? So being accurate with that, surely that's difficult. Talk me through that. You've got it, a it, lot of accuracy with the nib of a paintbrush. What's you, the difference? The difference is uh, when you've got a paintbrush in your hand, you you're actually physically touching the miniature so you know exactly where the paint's going. Yeah. When you've got an airbrush there's a, a disconnect between the miniature and yeah. the airbrush. You're not actually physically touching the miniature mm -hmm. so you have to get used to spraying with the airbrush onto the actual miniature and know exactly where the paint's going to go. Yeah. So that takes a little while um, you know, minute. Yeah. So you've, you've got no mechanical feedback, basically. You don't have that tactile sensation. No. You, I guess, if you're moving, you're doing it by eye, and you've got the feel exactly as to where you're moving. Um, but what about? And then, I suppose, if you're further away, it, it, it will increase the size of the the area closer up. How does that work for very fine points? Um, yeah. When you're working on fine points. Mm -hmm. You need to be closer into the miniature, but that's when things like pressure of your compressor comes in. Yeah. Because if the pressure's too high and you went to spray with your airbrush onto the miniature, yeah. the paint would just hit it at such a force, <laughs> the paint <laughs> would just splatter everywhere. Splatter everywhere. Do but, we have anyone watching who uses airbrushes quite frequently? Love the t-shirt, yo Mike. My, my, mine or Mike? Uh, not Mike's, Sean's. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, he's talking to Mike off camera. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Have <laughs> you seen me? No, no, I can't see you. Just, yeah. just knows the voice, no doubt. I'm wearing a Resident Evil t-shirt. Uh, OPN has his uh, bespoke custom shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, going back to you. So, pressure of the compressor. Yes, is, yeah. is, is, is crucial. I mean, normally I work at 20 PSI, um, but it can vary depending on whether I'm priming or doing large scale things right. like for example I painted some beautiful terrain uh, the other day mm -hmm. uh, which you'll probably see on Goblin Gaming's site sure. shortly yeah, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll get yeah. it over here when we're waiting while we're waiting for this to dry I guess because time was against me and I needed to paint it quickly unfortunately mm -hmm. I put the PSI up to about 35 and I was just spraying from about four inches away in big spray patterns yeah. just to fill the actual model up with paint as quick as okay. I could possibly could. Um, so you do get used to those things though. Do you by any chance do any painting tutorials for Dark Angel, Space Marines or Imperial Knights? Have you done any videos on that? I have. I yeah. have got a two Imperial Knight videos. I think I did a really cool um, Death Guard one converted uh, yeah. night, so I've got a tutorial up on that yep. uh, on my All Painter Nerd YouTube channel, yep. and also I think I did a standard night as well, if I can remember correctly. Um, but that would have been about a year or so ago. But the video will still be there mm -hmm. uh, to watch. So yeah, Dark cool. and Dark Early Angels, on, yeah. yeah, Dark Angels, definitely. Uh, I've got some tutorials for Dark Angels. Cool. So yeah, if uh, that will be on your YouTube channel. So either you can follow the tag at the top of this video, which takes you to OPN's Facebook, or you can just search straight up on YouTube for All Painter Nerd.
and that should take you there. Have a look at those. Obviously, the keyword's going to be you know, search for Dark Angel or was yeah. it Imperial Knights. Yeah, search for Imperial Knights. Um, and will most of these be using a um, spray? Yes, yeah, so they'll mostly be using an airbrush, but an airbrush is just a tool. It's yeah. it's not the you it's not a magic tool. You can't you yeah. can't do everything with the airbrush. So yeah. I use an airbrush to do certain techniques, but the brush is always going to be. Uh, and you handy. can recreate. You just brush instead of airbrush, right? So yeah. If you're airbrushing it, we paintbrush it. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. So what are we on to now on the model? We're still doing the corn red base. Yeah, we're red pretty base. much finished now. So what are these shoulder pads that we've avoided? Well, that's, um, that's I'm going to leave. Material. Yeah, I'm going to just leave those white. Um, we're not going to be painting any of the shoulder pads or the face in this. Uh, what is video. face mask? I deliberately put that on there to, oh, right. to, to trick you up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, normally this this unit um, has the hood up and has a normal face. So. I thought I'd be a little bit annoying when putting, putting a, this together. A, a top tip uh, <laughs> with painting miniatures, if I can just get it on the... Uh, I'm going to put it on the front cam for you for a moment. Yeah, just so I can so see we're it back, on back to here. So we're, okay, we're so things. top tip is if on your palette you actually roll the actual brush oh, on okay, your let's, fingers... Let's go more if, to the... There we go, we're looking more at the palette. Sorry yeah. I misunderstood. No, that's fine. Yeah. And if you roll it... So you'll get a really nice tip on the uh, bristles of the brush oh. and then when you actually go in to paint the face you'll be able to get super super accurate and smart details I also these Games Workshop holders are fantastic uh, I normally just use a bit of blue tack on an old paint pot yeah. but these are even better so highly recommend these even though I don't actually have one at the moment but they are <laughs> brilliant uh, as I'm using it today I will be picking one up um, but yeah, you, you literally can get very accurate. Yeah, that is very good. It's a fine tip brush. Yes. Look after your brush tips, obviously, yes, so they don't definitely. splay. And rolling them through the paint. Um, the other thing I was going to ask you about was wet palettes and people's use of them. Yeah, I, I use a wet palette, and, and they are great, but I'd say the more so you'll find that they they come into their own when you've been painting for a, a while because yeah. then you can use mixes that will stay wet on the palette for yeah. days if you've got a, a nice uh, airtight lid on the actual palette. So wet palettes are great, yeah. If you're doing batch painting over a couple of days, for example. Perfect. So I've got like 20 plague marines to do. Yeah. Wet palette. Wet palette, definitely. Nice. Cool. Okay, so I'm just going to let this dry a moment and yeah. then we're going to come in with some uh, Games Workshop Mephiston Red. So there this is go. quite. A, uh, I've used this before when uh, dry brushing around for like fire effects and stuff. Yeah. This is quite a. I would say this is quite a chalky sort of red colour. Would yeah, that be correct? Uh, yeah, it's 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 a very nice red colour. And again, because this is. <laughs> make sure I don't yeah. splat the paint I've done everywhere. that before. Just like when you open a yogurt and it just goes. Yeah, it goes. <laughs> um, the base paints from Games Workshop are fantastic. Uh, I'm not a big fan of paint pots, I prefer dropper bottles. Yeah, we can let that dry for a moment, don't worry, you don't have to power through just yet. No, yeah, <laughs> um, but the actual base paints from Games Workshop are really good. Yeah. Highly pigmented and great coverage. So you prefer dropper bottles? I do, because the reason is, with paint pots, once you start using a palette, yeah. when you want to do mixing ratios, getting paint from a pot I can see to that, the, yeah, yeah. but with the dropper bottle you can just very accurately put one drop of one colour on, one drop of another colour, yeah. write it in a little journal to say what your paint mix was and you know you're done, yeah. but when you're trying to mix from the pot it just doesn't work as well and also they get crusty with paint and dry out quicker, dry out yeah. quicker. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just a personal preference. I know some people actually prefer painting from the pots, but mm. it is it is personal preference. So I, I guess the best way is you mix by eye and you try and do the best job you can. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> As you come back to let's it. See, let's see how this is drawing. So, so, it's so, getting there. It's going to be a minute or two, but it's getting there. So we've still got plenty of you guys with us. If you've got any questions while we're waiting for um, these models to, this, well, this one model to dry before we move on to the next one, just fire them up because this is a very relaxed, very chatty um, little stream that we're doing. Oh, I can see uh, Mark J there. Love the t-shirt. Uh, hi, Mark. I'll just say hi to Mark there. Playing favourites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So 
So people have gone off to find your uh, dark angels. Oh, ah, cool. Just, just reading the messages that people have put up and the little love hearts and stuff that everyone's been throwing up. Why ask? There we go. I've, I've just contributed to myself to boost our own stream. Yeah. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> no shame. No shame. At all. So. This is nearing dry. These are drying very quickly, which is nice. Yeah, this is really helping me that they're drying quickly to die. Quite warm in the office. Tom, yeah. Tom is very cold-blooded, so <laughs> he has the heating on. <laughs> All right, well, what I'm going to do now is add some Mephiston red to the palette. Okay. Again, always thin your paints down. Not only is it going to make the opportunity of using less paint because you're making it thinner so obviously you're expanding it um, it just goes on so much smoother again I'll roll the bristles of the brush into a point to get more accuracy when I paint on the miniature now as you can see if you're new to painting you'll probably think to yourself well you've painted it red why are you painting it red again but what we're going to do is keep all of the corn red behind in all the recesses so all the inner parts of those creases there we're going to leave the corn red behind right and then with the Mephiston red, we're going to paint on the top surfaces. So we're all, it's highlighting almost. Yeah, highlighting. But on a very large part of the model. Yeah. So if you can see that from the side, Sean is just tracing along like the, the ridges and the folds of the robe and filling in the gaps here as well. Now I'm using a layer paint brush here uh, from Games Workshop. You can use a slightly uh, smaller brush if you wanted to take your time more, uh, but as we are today, I think we're fine with a layer paint brush. Yeah, bearing in mind I am making Sean speed paint this today, <laughs> more or less. Still quite a few guys with us. If you haven't already guys, just give us a little thumbs up so we know you're there. Give us a, or a, a smiley face or you know, an angry face if you really don't think this model should be painted in red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where's, the, uh, where's the art card for this model? This is, well, it's kind of like a blacky purple would yeah. be the, uh, the normal. I'm not sure you'll see that too well there. It's um, not looking too bad. No. Very vampiric. Yeah, very. Uh, another tip as well, if you're edge highlighting, mm -hmm. um, if you actually don't paint with the front part of the bristles of the brush, if you actually paint with the side of yeah. them, you can actually draw the line across the miniature and that will do the highlighting for you uh, rather than you trying to paint the Too highlight long, yourself. Yeah. So here's a good one, so you're using my brushes at the moment, oops sorry I just punched yeah. the microphone, sorry everybody listening. Brush care, I don't do so well with some of mine, some of them you may notice have got a couple of splayed, I try, I try my best. What, yeah. What's the best tips for looking after best brushes? Best tips. Because uh, one stray bristle can screw your highlight. Yeah. Um, there's some great products out there on the market that you can get. Uh, Master's brush soap, fantastic. You just literally wash the uh, brush in the soap, yep, and it will keep the tips on the bristles yep. nice and sharp and uh, in great condition. To be honest. So soap. Is there anything you shouldn't be using on the brushes? Uh, the the worst thing you can do with the brushes is let paint dry in there. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think when you're new to the hobby that's brush care is probably the least thing that you you're going to be uh, good at. Yeah. But the the worst thing you can do is let paint dry. I mean I'm doing it on rushing here today, <laughs> but you can so, see when I, you I picked up a new brush just for today. Yes. Yeah, when, <laughs> when 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 you're actually adding paint to the uh, the brush. You don't want to get the actual paint down to the ferrule of the brush if you can help it. So near, I'm guilty of having done that with this brush. You, you want to try not to do that because obviously that's where the paint can dry and also start splitting the brushes and once that happens it's, it's not good because you're not going to get the accuracy from the brush if you know, you've got splayed bristles yeah. on the actual paint. Anyway, I'm going to start highlighting more uh, around this Masters. lovely miniature. Master's now. soap is amazing, says yeah. Christian. Who's gardening? What are you gardening? I like a bit of gardening. Awesome. Uh, yeah, my, my beans have just grown. I've got a load of heirloom beans, which yeah. i got. Um, some different varieties, which are really nice. Little red flowers on them. So looking forward to them growing. Cool. 
Multicultural, this is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like my gardener. It's, it's another hobby for the patient, is gardening. Yes. Yeah, just just stalked up my beans. <laughs> yeah, they're doing good. I had some beetroot, a patch of beetroot in the corner of my garden, which I literally haven't touched for like a year, because I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're huge, absolutely huge. It's going to taste terrible, not going to be usable. But it's a try. <laughs> See, we do other things than paint and play board games. As you can see now on camera, you, you, um, if I just... Yeah. We can slowly start to see those highlights coming through, hopefully, on the camera. Um, I'm going to give it one more thin coat with this Mephiston Red, and then we're going to move on to the Wild Rider Red layer paint, which is a, a really nice ready orange colour. So as you can see, I mean, I'm being fairly quick today doing this, but you know, take your time. These miniatures are beautiful, and um, you so you want to make the most of them. Definitely some of the nicest ones to paint. Yeah. Let's go see if I can remove those grid lines. You know, the grid lines they're not really bothering me that much <laughs> but I just noticed that there are grid lines from the camera on the stream but you know what they look fine yeah they're, um, I'm almost using them as a frame of reference for the models being out <laughs> just going around yeah it, oh, the front one yeah, uh, yeah the paint is going still Oh, no. Did that grid just pop up just now? No, it's been there. It's been there the whole yeah. time, yeah. <laughs> I can get rid of it, but it would require me to prod around on the camera while we're streaming. No, I quite like it. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, just nice smooth thin lines around the creases. Jason, I'm painting my own Space Marine chapter. It's a light desert colour. I've had some advice, but it doesn't seem to be coming out right. Would you say the would you say to base coat in the main colour? Yeah, um if you want sort of like a desert colour, uh, I'm thinking sort of like a khaki type of colours maybe, uh, yeah. maybe Sandry Dust would be great, and which is a base yeah. paint which comes out beautifully uh, from Games Workshop, so if you maybe used a Sandry Dust and added uh, something like a Shabti Bone as a highlight so on top of that maybe. Almost skeleton colour. Yeah. So yeah, I suppose that is sort of desert colour, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So that would give you a very skeleton bone kind of yeah. colour. I guess then depending on what you wash it with. Would yeah, impact a, not, a like nice a skeleton. Yeah, a seraphine sepia uh, wash would look nice on that. But then you could also uh, start weathering it, add some um, Games Workshop Rhinox Hide uh, yeah. with some little paint chips with some sponge maybe on top of uh, your vehicles. Mm -hmm. Look really nice on right. desert vehicles. Cool. That sounds good. Right, we're just letting the Mephiston red dry. That's going to be another minute or so, I think, and oh. then we can start going with the Wild Rider red. Okay, army painted desert yellow. So let's pop that down. Let that rest for a moment. Let's have let's have a look at this piece. So we're going to talk about airbrushing for a moment. Right, let's yeah. give me a chance to get those grid lines away while we do it. Okay. So Sean is probably sick of this right now. <laughs> <laughs> This is a piece of scenery that we had OPM, <laughs> Sean, airbrush up for us, right? Yep. Which is going to be featuring on the games table, so I hand that to you? Yeah. Very soon. Can you talk us over what you did with this? Yeah, of course. So Whilst I fix the camera. <laughs> the, the most important thing for me when painting these scenery was to get the colours to be 
consistent with each other. So uh, I went for gold and then I went for like a bone colour. And because I went for colours that are similar, the overspray that you get with the airbrush wasn't too crucial. So I didn't have to do much touch up. So it enabled me to save hours and hours in uh, the painting stage. Uh, the bronze was done using, I think it was a Green Stuff World's bronze paint, a new paint that's on the market, beautiful paint, uh, Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop, and a, a favourite paint of mine uh, has got to be a Nicolac Oxide from Games Workshop that gives that patina or verdigris effect on the miniature, and I absolutely love that. Oh, I've used that a lot Yeah, for it's the almost ghost effect on my... Uh, oh, right, okay. Uh, on top of a Celestia Grey. Oh, very nice. Uh, to give like a ghost effect on top of my Yathalis Guardians. Yeah. Similar to what you'd use in the, um, well, the, the Soul Wars box. So, it is Soul Wars, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The uh, little Nighthorn Oh, I bet that looks really so nice on those. I've done that. I'm by no means a pro painter. But I've done, oh, that looks quite good behind it, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've done that for that. So I, I like that effect as well myself. Um, but painting these up, lovely looking scenery, so detailed from Games Workshop there. Yeah. Just really nice. They are, this is fantastic. So to do this, you chose what your base colour is going to be. It, I started off, which is always the best thing to do. If you're painting large items, yeah. go for the metallics first. So you base coat it with a metallic. Yeah, the reason you go for the metallics first is because when you get overspray with an airbrush, Metallic flex is very hard to cover up. Yeah. So you go for the metallics first. So we painted all the gold first. Then we went for the bronze. So let's just pop that here. Yep. Now we can really see. So I've got rid of your grid lines for you guys. Oops. I'm just going to knock everything over too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm being very careful with those paints that I did. So here we go. Let's look at that. That's beautiful. So you've airbrushed this. Sorry, I just yep. cut you off completely. No, that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, uh, airbrushing it, start with the metallics. Yeah. Uh, get those out of the way first. And then you can build in the colours, which I did with a Vallejo Desert Tan, I think it was called. Yeah. And it's a primer, uh, but it's a coloured paint. And I think those paints are fantastic. They come in larger sizes, so if you're doing a lot of terrain, it's going to save you a lot of money than buying small bottles of paint. Yeah. So buy the larger paints if you're doing terrain. Uh, and then I we've got this. this. The skull effect in this is brilliant. Oh Continue. yeah. <laughs> uh, the um, little, it's called OSL, which stands for Object Source Lighting, was done so simply with the airbrush yeah. there yeah. on the lights. Um, it's slightly smaller, maybe easy to hold that one in there. Yeah. Try and bend and break everything. See how we're getting yeah, that. down a little bit there. Well, you can see it next to the statues as well. The nice. little red glowing lights. It's basically what just a yeah. spray from the air. Yeah, um, takes two seconds to do, which could take hours with a normal brush. This yeah. is where the airbrush comes into its own, where you can do effects with an airbrush you can't do with a brush, yeah. and vice versa. If you're scenery painting, mm -hmm. it looks to me like airbrush is the way to go. Without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you would. <laughs> I'd say there's probably about five hours worth of work between both of these pieces. Yeah. If you was doing with a brush, you're probably talking days, week, uh, oh, maybe good. a week. Yeah, just just to do the the platforms. And yeah. For a long, long time. Basic. Yeah. I, hate, I couldn't go back to basic models. With oh no, no. I'm gonna have to give. I'm gonna have to learn myself. Mark J says this scenery is superb, and it is. It is fantastic scenery. Um, Andy, like afternoon, both really enjoying this. Thank you, Andy. Um, you know, if you've got friends online who might enjoy it too, give us a little share to them. Let, let them see that we're a painting masterclass. Uh, and Simon Daniel says hello, Sean. Uh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Right. So oh, sorry, I was just reading the message. That no, that's got. good. So, scenery aside, that was a little distraction. If you want to ask more about the techniques that Sean's used on the scenery, a bit more about airbrushing. Um, then yeah, go ahead because like this, as you can see on the camera, this looks fantastic. The, the bronzing, the metalling, the rust effects are all really cool, and this is going to look great on one of our gaming tables. Right. I, okay. So what I'm going to do now? Let's put this out of the way. Yeah. Because I will break it. Is <laughs> that's not a threat. That's just. <laughs> <laughs>
we're going to start using the Wild Rider Red now and as you can see this is going to be a lot brighter than the Mephiston Red that we added before so what we're going to do is add it in smaller amounts so more so to the extreme uh, edges of the folds so the top surfaces of those folds we're going to go and as before roll the bristles of the brush into a nice point and then we're just going to just lightly go over those folds. Now what you'll find is that this is such a jump from the Mephiston Red that you'll notice it being just a little bit too strong but that's when we're going to come in with a glaze uh, blood letter a little later on and we're just going to tone it down a little. So we're using rather a lot of people will be wondering where are the wash? Why are we not washing this? We don't need to wash. Uh, if, if you layer paint you don't need to wash. You can wash uh, but the fact that we went from two base paints, which is uh, the corn red and the base paint, not alleviated the need to do a wash. You can do an all over wash, yeah. uh, but we're not doing that today. Uh, we're just layering uh, with this miniature. I mean, there's so many different ways you can go about uh, painting a miniature, uh, but a wash is one way of doing it, uh, but we're, we're not doing that today. Okay. So if you're using just, normally if you're using just one base coat, say again, yep. Plague Marine, so you put the Plague Marine Green on, that's all you do really, you yep. wash it and then you touch up with Plague Marine Green again. Really. Y yeah, exactly, uh, yeah, I mean if we was going to do um, this miniature today with a wash, we would have used Carabool Crimson yeah. uh, over uh, the Corn Red, yep. and then we would have touched up with the Corn Red again, but we've done it slightly different today. This is interesting because actually last night I was painting the cloth parts red on some of my Blake Marines. Okay. Um, and I went for a very bright sort of screamer pink colour. Oh nice. Um, and then I washed it with the Drukai Violet. Oh yes. To create a similar colour but the effect isn't as good as this. <laughs> so I, I still think it worked quite nicely. And here we go. Again, using the edge of my brush here, as you can see on camera. Yeah. See, he's got that really sharp fold there. Now, I could go in this way, but it's so much easier to use the side of the bristles Just to highlight. Okay. So that side, I have a really nice view of that side highlighting. I um, don't know whether the camera has Probably as well. Not. It's uh, distance from the camera is about here is probably the best focus as well, I reckon. About there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So this is the edge of the brush rubbing along the, the actual raised edge yeah. of the armor. Yeah, that's perfect, mate. It's perfect. Yeah. Now, if you guys like these live streams and you you keep watching them, we keep doing them. We will get multiple cameras of this quality. <laughs> we have just just the one camera at the moment. As you can see, it's really starting to. Um, look nice now that the miniature even at this uh, stage yeah he's looking fab it all starts coming together as you get the edge highlights yeah. and it's um, it's odd because when you do the first one or the first two you're like why is there a bright red streak on the model exactly <laughs> and then as you do more and they kind of feather into each other yeah you're like yeah no that's cool that's a very very vibrant shiny robe Right, now I'm just going to do a few more uh, touch-ups. I'm just going to use a bit of Mephiston Red here. So we've gone back to the second base colour. Yeah, the reason why we're doing that is I'm just feathering some of the edges that I've done that I'm just not happy with, yeah. where I think I've gone a bit too thick. Now the great thing about painting uh, miniatures with thin paints is because it's thin, you're not going to clog up all of that beautiful detail on the miniature and also if you make a mistake you can just go back in with your previous colour and paint over it and again because you're painting with such thin paints because you're watering them down yeah. you're not going to spoil any of the detail and you can cover up mistakes really easily uh, it doesn't matter if you've been painting uh, a month, ten years or so we all make mistakes yeah I make loads of them <laughs> so. Christian Daniel moved out of range of the Wi-Fi in the garden Oh no. Yeah, unfortunately his Wi-Fi doesn't quite reach the spuds, the potato patch. <laughs> Just, yeah, I don't know what to suggest there. Okay. You can't do that thing like with car keys where you hold it up, yeah. can you? 
Right, now uh, I'm just going to let that dry for about a minute or two. It's nearly dry already, and then we're going to hit it with some of this uh, glazed blood letter. Now, in fact, I'm actually going to do an extreme edge highlight before I do that, actually, Ooh. to be honest. This is uh, Layer Plane uh, Fire Dragon Bright. Fire Dragon Bright. Okay. okay. Uh, just give it a shake. This is very bright and a, a much lighter tone than um, yeah. these other ones. So we've gone from a very deep corn red to this slightly chalkier, lighter Mephisto. Then it's almost into the oranges now, the yeah. Wild Rider red. And now this is def this is orange to me. Yeah, this is pure orange. Yeah, yeah. this is like um, you know high vis jacket orange. So what we're going to do here is we literally... So this guy's got his high-vis cloak on. Because it's dangerous working around all these Necrons, right? Wait, he's not a Necron, he's a gene stealer. He's I'm sure it's very dangerous working around <laughs> them as well, to be fair. We're, we're just going to very, very thinly apply this orange here to these... <laughs> Mostly weeds. Folds. He's growing weeds. No. <laughs> You shouldn't say that on the camera. <laughs> all the best gardeners must grow weeds. Because I, I go to these gardens, they're amazing, and they're really good gardeners, and there's no weeds, right? So clearly, if you're managing to grow weeds, you must be better than them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Holding the phone to my head, worked out to get chat again. There we go. Just get some, get some tinfoil. Wear a tinfoil hat in the garden. <laughs> yeah. No one will think you're weird. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Sean. No, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm just literally going around the very extreme edges mm -hmm. of the cape with the orange. This looks cool. I should have tried to do the same, shouldn't I? Next time, yeah. we'll have a paint off. Yeah. All right, me against Sean. You gotta do the same technique. Same technique. <laughs> we'll paint something awesome. Like, uh, what have we got? I'll find something cool for us to paint. Yeah, yeah that's true. They're yeah. lovely the miniatures from Blackstone Fortress. Fortress. Lovely miniatures. Oh, yeah, there's that box I was just sorting through the other day. So, there we go, that's sorted. If anyone, if anyone wants to see uh, us go head to head with the Blackstone Fortress paint off, then, um, yeah, just say. Right. Oh, yeah, oh, there we go, thumbs up. Someone thinks that's a good idea. We're nearly done with the extreme hard edge highlighting. Now, I'm doing this in minutes guys, if you want to take your time on these miniatures you can spend four or five hours, longer than that, uh, to get the, the, the highlights as crisp and nice as you possibly can. Do you know what this stream is missing? No? Yeah. Tom, come here. <laughs> I was just saying the stream was missing something. Alright, what's going on? Tom, Tom has come to join the stream. Hi guys! <laughs> <laughs> I've pulled him away from work. What do you think? You haven't seen this yet? Uh, Not close, no. I've been trying to watch it on the stream just then. Oh, no, you were working, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, I've had a minute now, so I'll come down and see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what's happening. So, so now we've good. done that extreme uh, hard edge highlights, <laughs> as no it's known. No pressure. <laughs> Let's show that on the camera. Let's see where... There it is. Yeah, perfect. That is looking great. Why would you Why would you want to have them in there? Terrible, terrible grey. Purple. purple. Yeah. The purple's not bad. Purple with gold gilding is nice, but I'm liking this red. What we're going to use now is the glazed blood letter. That's going to tie those colours together. It's going to tone down the orange and it's going to make it look really good. Yes. Yeah, someone will watch that. Yay! Yeah. Paint off. Paint off. Paint off would be cool. Just don't don't give me like a uh, air, air gun for the first. Time. <laughs> <laughs> you work your way up to that. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. I just what? <laughs> and if oh, you can oh, say, we can paint Tom. Yeah. Get some body paints in. <laughs> We're just painting the glaze on now, and as you can see, it's toning down the orange. Lovely. That is cool. That is very cool. They go over just like washes. Just like a wash, yeah, really. Uh, you apply it in a nice, smooth, even coat. So, what do you need to be aware of when using the glazes? When using the glazes, it's, they're very simple to use. You can use, you can paint with a glaze, um, which makes things more complicated if you're actually painting in very, very thin layers to do um, colour transitions. But if you're painting 
in this technique where you actually do base paints, layering, and then use the glaze to tie it all together at the end. It's very yeah. simple to do. Okay. Uh, as you can see, I'm just literally placing it on and tying all those uh, reds and oranges together. Charlie has joined. Hello, Mr. Charlie. Charlie uh, definitely wants to see you do some tank painting. Oh, yes. Very soon. He'd love that. Yeah. Charlie, what tank um, do you want to see painted? Let's... Uh, we we can make that happen. Artillery. How do you can you paint artillery like you can a tank? How do you fancy painting some artillery sometime? Artillery, it's fine. Yeah. There you go, Charlie. We'll do some artillery for you. Definitely not because I have artillery that needs painting. What have you got? The little uh, the base one where it's a couple of guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, and the um, like in a placement. Sort yeah, of thing. exactly. Yeah. Zeus. He wants Zeus Panzer. No, I didn't pronounce that. The right. Zeus Panzermech. Panzermech. So that's the Conflict 47 yeah. miniature. Yeah, they're nice. Which, um, yeah. I think you've painted one of those up, actually. Do you want me to well, have you quickly grab one of these for you so you can show? It's you, not me. Yeah. Because I haven't painted that up. It's not much you haven't painted, though. No, I've painted a few <laughs> miniatures in my time. Okay, so Charlie, here comes your Zeus Panzermech. Here's one we made earlier. No, yeah, this is the mammoth. <laughs> so this is from... Um, Conflict 47, Sean painted this for James. And it's part metal, part resin, and it does weigh quite a bit. Yeah, it's a chunky beast. It is. Wow, yeah. But it it's is. really cool. And he did quite a bit of nice weather in there as well. Yeah. That's the rust and stuff on it. Yeah. It's a lovely miniature to work on as well, actually. Yeah, thank you, Tom. See, Charlie, way ahead of you. <laughs> um, that was a Blue Peter moment. So we've got to let this glaze dry. Yep. And then we're pretty much done with it, to be honest. I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, an extreme hard edge highlight to the mask he's wearing. Mm -hmm. Again, I roll the bristles uh, yes. into that sharp point. Now the thing is, which one of us is going to finish the model? <laughs> <laughs> I think you should, because then you'll be practicing. Then I can be like, I did That'd this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> what, the oh, I'll send you a picture of it when I'm done. <laughs> like, what have you done? <laughs> but once Don't that, touch the cloak. Yeah. <laughs> once that all dries though, um, we've painted how long have we been on, on stream now? We've been on stream for about uh, just under 50 minutes and lots of uh, me faffing around. We've <laughs> painted, we've base painted, we've layer painted, we've highlighted and we've even added a glaze mm -hmm. so it doesn't take too long to get you know nice looking miniatures on, good, on the yeah. tabletop. Yeah, That's really nice looking. What so do you uh, think about the contrast paints? I really like them. Uh, Sorry, I, haven't I, I, haven't right. I haven't used them Tom but yeah. I really, I was just about to dip my paintbrush in my tea then. <laughs> Never do that, guys. <laughs> I've done that so many times. <laughs> so, I, sorry. Jason Marsden's asking, I've never used a glaze before. Is there one for my desert theme with Ushabti Bone as the main colour? Mm. I believe there is a uh, one. I don't, know the, I don't know the name of all Games Workshop paints off the top of my head, but you'd be looking for a, a, a like a... A sepia type of uh, glaze to bring them together uh, but if you look on the games on Goblin Gaming's web store you'll be actually able to see uh, all the different glazes there's actually a really nice section where it says base layer and glaze look at the glaze section and look for like a sepia type tone uh, and that would work really well for uh, your desert theme I would I would think does this glaze glaze leave it glossy I wouldn't say it's drying overly glossy is no it, it shouldn't yeah, do it should I, I, I believe these dry quite matte as you can see there yeah, yeah they do dry matte oh, what they? they do um, they do three games workshop does the lament is yellow way watchers green and the blood letter yeah and lament is yellows probably the only one I'd use over like a bone yeah there you go oh. lament is yellow so you, you heard that from Tom, lamentous yeah, yellow. Um, but I, I, I believe that these new contrast paints that Tom just talked about a moment ago, you can because they're so highly pigmented and they're thin as well. If you thin them more, they'll be perfect to use as glazes. Yeah. And I think what there's 36 colours in that range. Show you up, Tom, so you can get your face again. That one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, come on. Just go through that. Door. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that the uh, <laughs> new. Um, 
contrast paints are going to be fantastic, aren't it? Yeah. For painting something like this yeah. as well, when it's yeah. got a lot of detail, because there's been people questioning whether um, what they'll work best on, and looking at it like the Nurgle stuff, mm -hmm. anything that's the new GW casts where they've got lots of detail. Oh yeah. Should just really pick, pick it up. Oh, it will. Um, yeah. They don't work very similar to a wash. Um, but the difference between a wash and these paints is the pigmentation, I think, of the colours. They'll literally paint the miniature than just wash it, hmm. even though you're applying it like a wash. That's, I think, the benefit of them. You're yeah. applying it like a wash, but it's going to paint the whole mini miniature. Yeah, super fast. Yeah, yeah. super fast. So, people get Yeah. Fun to use. We didn't use the black. We didn't. What I was going to use the black for... Yeah. I can actually show you now. I was going to use it to mix it with a corn red. Yeah, darken up the corn red a little. Contrast speed painting in a Tuesday. Oh, so we contrast speed painting in Tuesday. <laughs> I have some plans for the contrast paints which yeah. you will enjoy. Okay. Yes. We're going to do some competitions. Oh yes. Oh, oh excellent. Right. And some some videos yeah. with them. Yeah. We and what can we laugh at you trying to do them. Oh, I'll be no, I'll be like a pro. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got. A, I will share with you later what we're going to do with the contrast paints. That's exciting. Um, to um, well, just for, just for a live, and um, we'll do a little giveaway with them too. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. If we go into the very, very extreme recesses of the cloak, mm. we can create even more deeper shading. Just adding a tiny amount of black there. You can wash uh, your miniature, oh. but. What you find sometimes when you're washing a, a really nice cloak that's such a large area, mm. you'll be left with staining behind from the actual wash. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you actually apply it into the exact area that you want it, you're not going to get any staining behind uh, on the actual miniature. Yeah. So here we can see there's a really nice crease there that if I just go into, it's going to really help pop out. Shades it nicely. Yeah. In a bit of a gradient. Fantastic. That's the hard part, is being brave enough to do that. <laughs> yeah. I never do that. <laughs> Worry you'll ruin what you've done in the whole time, like, what you've done. I know I will. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, if you can see on camera there, you yeah. can see... There's highlights coming out. Mm -hmm. That's ace. So that is a nice little tutorial. So that you can apply that to pretty much any model um, with just by choosing slightly different, well, the, the different colors, colors yeah. the same yeah. gradient. So yeah. you could apply that to any color by choosing deep, slightly less, and then off shade, brighter, brighter glaze. Yeah, um, definitely. So you you could match that up almost paint pot for paint pot. One, two. So you use five parts. Yeah, I mean you could even use less. Plate. Yeah, I mean the most important thing is you get down your base paint in a nice, smooth, even layer. Yeah. You can do it in two layers, three layers, it doesn't matter. As long as you apply it <laughs> thin, <laughs> then it will obviously make the miniature look really nice. Yep. And then obviously you want to highlight it, so then you go up to your layer paints. And then you don't have to again use a glaze, but I just find that adding that glaze, if you go extreme with the highlights, brings it all back together again. Mm -hmm. Would you go back in and put some touch up highlights like with a pure orange, just like very thin, very small? You can highlights? do, it depends on how you want it to look. If you want it to look more natural, you, you, you would probably leave it at this stage. Yeah. But if you want it to really pop on the tabletop, then you could go back in with your orange again, like I did earlier, and you can just make those uh, highlights. Nice touch yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's cool. And the more that dries, the nicer and nicer it looks. Oh, That's thank fun. you. I appreciate that. <laughs> It's really cool. It's great. So if you were going to do it to the normal colour scheme on here, you would basically be choosing the deepest purples. Yeah. See, like I said, you can apply this really easily. If you want to do the, uh, the Gene Sealer Locus as per the picture, just instead of using the reds and the yep. orange tones, you're going to use the purples and the purple tones. Yeah. And you'll end up with a really nice looking model. And then the only difference is they've edged in gold. The gold, the yes. Fine detail there. Mm -hmm. But we haven't got the hood on ours, because um, I really wanted to give you a harder time. Face mask. <laughs> a little face mask. <laughs> yeah, that looks fab. Awesome. So if, if there's no more questions uh, for Sean, we need to get some lunch. So yeah. with that, 
Thank you very much. We will pizza yeah, yeah. Pizza time. <laughs> we may be back with a live quickly for judging this basing competition. And then we've got some night to play. Night Underworlds. 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 Yes. Underworlds. Can't Underworlds. wait. Because we've got an Underworlds tournament going on right now. It's all mini it's really cool. Yeah, just a couple yeah. of people playing. Yeah. And uh, you haven't seen any of the bases yet. No, I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait. No, I, can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. I have. I'm quite looking forward to making these two look at them reaction cam style. Yeah. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. So what time do you want to do that at? We'll do that as an impromptu. We're not in. We'll get our lunch in. We'll yeah. chill. We've made you work hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'll be back maybe in a couple of hours' time. Okay. So thanks very much for watching the stream, guys. Cheers, we guys. will Thank catch you later. If you've enjoyed it, share it out. Let us know what you thought. Um, we'd love to be doing more of these with you. So have a good one. <laughs>